Hi folks, welcome back to the Big Data Beard YouTube channel. And today we're going and hustling through week three of the Machine Learning Coursera course uh, by Andrew Neen. So if you've been following along, you've seen uh, Aaron and I have been talking about, you know, our struggles with the course and then, you know, the things we like. But now we're jumping into week three and we promised, we promised other members of the Big, Big Data Beard team would be on. And today Yay. we've got Kyle. So Kyle. <laughs> hey. Thanks for having me. I feel super fancy. Yeah, ready to dig into some math. Okay, got my uh, calculator ready to go. Oh my gosh! There it is. Yes, that we were we talked about that in episode yep. two. So we need to get we need to get your thoughts on it. I felt like uh, I used Octave. I felt like Octave reminded me of the interface, the way the programming you know programming language and syntax was. I felt like it was what it was that calculator. What did you think? I, I didn't use Octave. I used MATLAB, but uh, so this, he was the uh, guy. The uh, guy I mentioned on episode two who told me to use MATLAB. <laughs> I so I, I have a bachelor's of computer engineering, and we used MATLAB a lot. So that's what I was familiar and comfortable with. Uh, Octave or is it Octave or Octave? Octave. Octave. Yeah, that's like that's Avi what we're Octave. rolling with because that's what I called it in episode two. So I like it. Um, <laughs> I just didn't use that because of creature comfort, um, but I did find myself during a lot of the homework just reverting back to Old Faithful. Uh, side note, this was my 21st birthday present from my parents. Aww. No, nothing says engineering student nerd <laughs> like a TI-89 calculator for your 21st birthday. But That's awesome. Man, I must be old. Yeah. I think I had the, the – was there a TI-83? Why do I think there was an 83? Yeah, yeah, there was okay. an 83. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had yeah. a different number, too. I thought it was 85, but I can't remember. But, yeah, Maybe. we all I had a different number. I think the TI-85. Mine wasn't like that. No, no, no. T, I, think, I think the TI-85 was uh, from Terminator 2. No, I mean, seriously, wasn't it? That no. would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just... I Same so. amount as soul training, but, you know, one's a Terminator and the other's a calculator. Hey, it's all, it's this all one, machine learning. Yeah. This one does uh, the 89 titanium, not to do a review on Texas Instruments, but it does uh, linear algebra built into it, as well as differential equations and calculus, three-dimensional calculus. So it's uh, muy bueno. So for this course, I mean, I mean not that you're going to give a, uh, everybody's going to run out and get a TI-89 calculator, but I mean, would you recommend it for this course if anybody has one laying around versus using MATLAB, or is it just you're comfortable with it? I, I I think it's creature comfort again. Uh, I I think if you got one laying around, definitely go grab it. But uh, in the spirit of the course, I would say definitely use Octave or MATLAB. Um, I I would also say just use Octave over MATLAB because Octave is uh, open source, is right versus MATLAB. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. Cint, Cint, CentOS versus uh, Red Hat. That's kind of like what we're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, use Octave if you're not familiar with MATLAB and, you know, don't necessarily worry about the calculator, but I just, the creature comforts uh, came through with this class. So, that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm sense. rocking it. Now that makes sense. Yeah, works out pretty well. So, yep. week week three, so we've covered, you know, we've covered week one with introduction and some of the linear algebra review, and then week two, you know, introduction to uh, MATLAB and Octave. Week three, this is why we're doing this course and just to show that you know we're we're all kind of being honest as we go through this course i have not stayed up in week three you know life kind of gets in the way i've got a newborn in the house and you know i've had you know just things have shuffled around and i've gotten behind the cool thing about this and so if anybody falls behind let me give you a tip right now first off don't fall behind but if you do because life gets in the way know that you know if you're taking this for this certification you still have time to roll and be able to submit your questions it just is going to start to pile up so i've still got time to kind of go back and catch up it's just i mean we're kind of you know starting to really get into the meat of the course and i mean we're talking you know probably 10 to 12 hours of, of content that i've got to catch up on this week plus another 10 to 12 just to catch up for the next week so that i have it all done but the cool yeah. thing is I, i'll still be able to sit you know get my certification as long as i continue to go through the course so but without that being said um Week three, classification, classification and representation, logistical regression models, multi-class classification, and then there's some uh, using, you know, implementing this in the real world using Octave or MATLAB. Aaron, you know, I'm behind, I'm the bad student, I'm gonna kick it to you. How, how has week three been for you? Yeah, I mean, and it was, uh, it's good to know that information because I, week three was kind of rough for me. I had to, uh, we had a family 
uh, issue come up. So we had to spend a lot of time almost like away from my computer. So it really piled up, but it was a long week. I was just looking through kind of like the list. Like you said, it was, it was almost like two main sections. And it really felt like um, the second one was regular regularization. So that was kind of like the main kind of grouping. Um, and it had some like long videos on it. So it was very, you know, tedious. Uh, we had it at a, again, like a rough week. So it was just it was a rough week to kind of like get it done. I screwed up a lot from some of my programming perspectives. It was again, I think we talked about this in week one, or actually we were, we talked about it once and, and it maybe never made it. What I realized is I tend to do a little bit better in the morning sure. now. Before I was doing everything at night, some of my classes, and I just kept like screwing up. And so finally, when I was trying to do some of the programming, it was more difficult for me on this week. I kept screwing up for stupid things and it was like, Literally had to like take a break, walk away, come back, even the next morning, kind of hope that my brain was a little bit more clear, um, just because it was just it was just too too much um, during the week. So it was one of those lessons that I learned that morning's a lot better for me if I kind of set aside some time, so really focus on the videos, write my notes in the book, uh, kind of practice, do some additional Google searching if I need to, um, on you know just some other ways of learning, you know about these topics. Um, certainly became a little bit beneficial to me. Um, and that's what I learned, again, because it was just hard just on a personal level and then just hard because there was just two main like sections. Two quizzes, only one assignment. This assignment, also from a programming perspective, was um, I think week two had only three things that you had to submit, but in this week there were like five things that you had to submit. Now, technically on one of them or on a couple of them, you would submit like two lines um, what I kind of found out is I didn't realize that it it say it was like a, um, like assignment letter C or something. So it was like C and D that I needed to submit in line. The first line was C. The second line was D. So I kept running C, not realizing that it was faulting back. I didn't get an error. Sometimes I would get an error, but it was for the wrong thing. So it was. It, it took me a while to really figure it out. But again. Some of them you had to sum, when you submitted it, it would submit for two lines, so it would be for like program C and D, and then the first line it would pop back an error. The second one, I would get the first one wrong, um, but the second one got a little bit better. So it was, it was another learning experience that I had overall uh, with regard to the programming of the class, and and uh, I had to take a couple of breaks. I've I've kind of had the same thing where you know it's the beginning of the new year, so you're yeah. you've got a lot of resolutions set, so you're trying to build out a schedule. <laughs> to then support the resolutions. So yeah. for me, uh, you know, like every other person in America, it's getting back in the gym. So fortunately I have a wonderful gym buddy, but you know, the morning starts 7 a.m. in the gym and then at right around eight o'clock sitting down with this class and, and devoting an hour or an hour and a half a day, just depending on what you've got available yeah. to really put this at the front of the day and not push it to the end of the day and then let work and everything else get in the way, but really make sure you're intentionally devoting time to this class to make sure that you get it because uh, much different than college where if you failed out of the class you know it was the end of the world your parents were pulling you out you you were going back home it was bad but you know there's not necessarily a huge uh, feat to the fire here for this class so I, I learned that you know you really have to be intentional with your self-discipline and, and and try and make that the beginning of the day yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly helps. And I definitely again thought my brain handled it a lot better in the morning too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I think uh for me, I mean honestly, you know, we're kind of at the point now if it wasn't for doing these videos and us kind of having accountability with each other, you know, I it I probably wouldn't have the urgency to catch back up and I might not, you know. So I think mm-hmm. you know, you know, giving out another tip, you know, for for this week, I think I think having an accountability group is uh kind of going to be key because I mean like I mean we talked about it a little bit I think in episode one um Aaron when we were talking about just not having you know not having you know being in a classroom you know a traditional setting yeah. and like I think even in like I've taken online classes before uh when I was working on my master's but I mean even then there was more of a team thing but you know with this being so many different people so many you know so many different cohorts too of when this class kind of goes on you don't really have even that sense even that loose base of team and so i think us putting one together with the big data beer team and then also having the schedule where we're recording and releasing this stuff you know where we have to be transparent uh, with the public i think that's that that's another key to helping there's a a oh go ahead no i just gonna say yes that is like everything i can't tell you again i i was literally spending an entire week in the hospital i was like 
I, I just, I don't know if I can do this class. I don't know if I can go home or I know if I can get up earlier to do that because we wanted to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Like, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, but what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to let other people down. I really like doing these videos. I like people like learning and having the opportunity to do these. And it, it kept me going. And I definitely think that if I didn't have these or didn't have you guys to work with, I might not have been able to do it. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad I let you down. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, here's another tip too. There's a Reddit has a machine learning subreddit as well as a Coursera subreddit where if you're a Redditor or a user of Reddit, you can get onto Reddit and build your own online study group together of, of people, which is a, a great way to find some accountability there. If you don't have a bunch of nerds like us to work with. Yeah. yeah that's a, class as well. that's a good uh, check. Actually, what we'll do is, uh, that's a good <clears> tip. Uh, Kyle, we'll make sure that we put that in the uh, show notes. So go to big and, uh, find, you know, find where we post this blog post and we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can link to that for anybody that's curious. Cause I'm, I'm actually curious about it too. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to hunt that down. Yeah. I wrote it down in my non mole school skin, um, book. I know <laughs> it's, it's only free note. This class, once again, is only free notebook worthy, not mole yeah. skin worthy. We established that Same. in uh, episode two. So. I I know I'm late to the game, but yeah, I've been doing it on one of the uh, free oh my vendor. <laughs> well, no, but it's funny. Part of the uh, New Year's resolution, you know, getting back in the habit of stuff is I hate this notebook <laughs> because, like, the the lines aren't big enough uh, yeah. for me to write. So I'm I'm going back to Walmart or Target or wherever to get the real spiral notebook college line paper that you can open it up like a book or spin it around. Yeah, no, I'm, no. I'm Why not so take over it to the next thing. level? Take it to the next it's, level and get a trapper keeper. Oh my god. Don't tempt me. <laughs> it's a door no, and, but, a, and a metal uh, lunchbox too. I Honestly, if, if all of that would fit into what I need to, when I travel to be able to do that, I would so do like, you know, the Trapper Keeper with the Velcro front, or maybe yeah. even do the five star zip up one. Yeah. What, or is that so after your alt time? Would a Trapper Keeper count as one really? of your carry uh, It depends. Yes. What else so could too. you fit into the Trapper Keeper? Yeah. yeah. So if I you mean, took your Trapper yeah. Keeper and your lunch pail, you're done. I mean, everything else, yes. everything else you have to check. Yeah, they literally look at basically what are what do you have in your hands? It's like I'll even if it's like a little purse, they're like, that's two items. I have to convert to a small purse so I can put my purse into my laptop bag, and then have my luggage. So that's two bags. So yeah. every little thing counts on the planes. Uh, we were flying last week, and I saw a, a lady at the airport literally, like Russian nesting doll, <laughs> slide in six bags into one. It was it was incredible. We're, yeah, we have skills. Yeah. Us women have skills about how to compact all of the items. Because I don't think it's fair. I automatically in life carry a bag. So I'm already dinged um, <laughs> when I get on a plane. So it's it's the rules are ridiculous. And I just think inappropriate uh, because, again, I already have a single bag. You guys don't. So it's not right. You don't know. I always have a laptop bag. Yeah, Merce or a yeah. satchel. Thank you. I have a laptop bag. Okay, when you start carrying a Merce... I will. It's a satchel. Buy it for you. Oh, whoa! So anybody is this for anybody on the Big Data Beer team? No, is that's that? I have that. That's where I have my laptop bag. I have that. Doesn't count. I already have that. I have can we get luggage, the Big Data Beard my logo laptop bag and a purse. on my satchel? Ooh. Corey, I don't know if Corey watches these. Corey, this is an idea. So there you go. You can make a Big Data Big Data Beard patch on your satchel. Yeah. And have a patchel. I, I actually have a spot on my gym bag where we could do that. So if, if we did have patches, I could put a big data beard. I got a big NASA patch on my gym bag. Nice. <laughs> That's me. Love it. Love it. So That's I guess nice. I'm going to – I I think I need to rein this back in. So um, yeah. what we've covered is uh, I missed this week. So don't fall behind. That's one of the tips. Erin actually went through, did all, did all the work. She talked about cascading and, you know, how, you know, some of the answers were dependent on the other ones. And so just, you know, kind of a little awareness there. Kyle using the uh, TI-89. So TI-89, yeah. little, little hack there. And we're going to wrap this episode up. Oh, and then also um, your purse and lunch bag and uh, Trapper Keeper does Trapper Keeper. count as your carry-on. So... Yeah. Go all good information, machine learning uh, relevant. But we will catch you in the next week episode. I will go and catch up. I will come back week four. We're ready to go. 
Thanks again. Thanks. Make sure you're subscribing too. So everybody, you know, stop what you're doing right now. If you got to this point in the video, make sure you subscribe so that you're never going to miss an episode. And just remember, maybe week 12, Aaron will sing us a song. Maybe. So thanks again, maybe. guys.